Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi, and today I'm reviewing an HO scale 40 foot high cube boxcar from Tangent Scale Models. My model is decorated for the fictitious Milwaukee Racine in Troy. I'm not getting compensated in any way for talking about this car. I bought it with my own money for reasons that I'll talk about later. These cars were made by Tangent Scale Models but sold exclusively at the Kalmbach Hobby Store. I got my car for $54.95 direct from Kalmbach. Unfortunately, if you want one, last I checked, these cars were sold out on the Kalmbach website. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The car comes in a cardboard box with a clear plastic window on top. Inside, a two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. A layer of flexible plastic film helps to protect against scratches. Inside the box is a package with spare end caps for the axles. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. The Milwaukee Racine in Troy is a fictitious railroad modeled by the staff at Kalmbach Publishing. Obviously, there isn't much to say about prototype accuracy with regard to a freelance boxcar. One of the beauties of freelancing a fictitious railroad is that no one can tell you it's wrong. The boxcar certainly looks plausible, though. It has all of the stenciling, cots panels, and other details that make it look typical and like something that could exist. It's the kind of car that could be sitting in a yard in the middle of a bunch of other prototype-based cars and it would look right at home. According to the Tangent website, the prototype 40-foot high-cube boxcars were built by Pullman Standard in 1967 and 1968 for five railroads, Burlington, Illinois Central, Milwaukee, Northern Pacific, and Rio Grande. The Burlington and Northern Pacific cars later went to Burlington Northern. These cars were originally pooled and used to haul appliances. In later years, some of the cars were repurposed to haul paper or put in maintenance of waste service. Many lasted into the 1990s. The paint on the car is opaque and thin enough to allow the weld seams on the boxcar body to show through. The lettering is crisp and the small stencils are legible with magnification. At the corners there are freestanding ladders and delicate stirrup steps. The door tracks are molded on, but the larger tack board is separately applied. On the ends the car has more freestanding ladders, separately applied tack boards, uncoupling levers, air hoses, and photo etched crossover platforms. The B end has a nicely done brake wheel assembly. Up top, the car has nice roof panel detail. Underneath, the car has a lot of brake system detail. The car has metal wheels with the standard RP25 tread profile. The axles have rotating end caps. The car has KD scale couplers on both ends. Looking for a match on the horizontal center line, the coupler on the A end is at the correct height. The coupler on the B end is a little low, so I'm taking five points. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is no significant body wobble. The model weighs 4.4 ounces. The NMRA recommended weight for a car of this length is around 3.8 ounces. The car is free rolling. To fix the BN coupler height, I'll start by removing the truck on that end. Since I need to raise the car on that end, I'll start with a KD Gray 10 thousandths washer. This actually made the coupler slightly high, so I had to file the bolster a little to compensate. A 5 thousandths washer might have been better, but I didn't have anything that thin. So you might be wondering why I'm reviewing this car at all. Um, you know, I normally do prototype-based rolling stock. Um, there's a few reasons. Uh, one, this car is a tangent model, so it's got all the detail that I like. Two, the paint scheme is pretty plausible. Um, I don't think it would look that unusual to see this in a string of prototype-based box cars. And uh, lastly, it kind of represents the original source of inspiration, or one of the original sources of inspiration for me doing the hobby. You know, I could have some criticisms of Model Railroader magazine in its current state, um, but for me, I'm thinking of when I was a kid and I used to read these magazines cover to cover and they were full of, uh, stuff that I just thought was amazing. Just, you know, the other people's layouts and their modeling projects and all this stuff I just thought was so cool. And I want to do that someday. You know, um, I still have a print collection going back to 1974, although a few years ago I switched over to a digital subscription because storing all that gets to be kind of a problem. <laughs> but, um, you know... What this represents to me, I guess, is that original inspiration and kind of going back to when I was a kid and thinking of how I got started in the hobby. Let's see what we've got. The car had one low coupler, so I took five points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 95 out of 100 possible points, which would be an A on our report card. This is a highly detailed model that looks really good. I'm giving it a green signal. Overall, I think Tangent did a really good job with this box car. If you're looking for something a little unusual for your HO scale layout, then I think you might like it. If you like this video, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.